Ha! 
I've had many dreams They vanished one by one But enough dreams were true, Lord That it keeps me dreaming on I've prayed many prayers For the answer I've waited long. He'll be so many times, Lord, that He keeps me praying on. I don't regret a mile. I've traveled for the Lord. I don't. I don't regret a mile I've traveled for the Lord I've had many friends They've left me one by one But enough friends were true, Lord That it keeps me I've gone many days in my heart without a song. You've blessed me so many times, Lord, that it keeps me trusting on. I don't regret a mile. I One more, get down out of the way. Oh, they gonna have one more. Okay. Uh, this song was on Emily's heart this morning, so we're gonna try to sing it. <coughs> Two cups before me, the old and the new. I could have either what must. Do. One cold was ugly, terribly torn. The other, a new coat, had never been worn. The old coat was dirty, not fit to wear. I love it often. And shed many a tear. There was a new coat presented to me. How I loved the old coat and put on the new. I tell you the best things I ever did.
says he is. Amen. And I'm glad he never changes and I'm glad today that he hears and answers prayers. Amen. I've seen so many prayers answered this week that it's just unreal. People being saved by the grace of God. People think it's over, but it ain't over. Until God sounds a trumpet, amen, they still hope for our people. And I'm telling you, if you've got somebody that's lost today, he's still God. He can still save them. He can still search them out. He can still deliver them this morning. You're just talking about your family going to your union. Brother, you may be the only light they ever see. And I know they've seen a change in you. You go today and win somebody to Jesus. Amen. God said you could be a soul winner. Go ahead and win them. Amen. You don't have to be afraid if God's with you. He said, if I be with you, if I be for you, who be against you? Come on. You need to understand God's not dead and He's still alive this morning. Praise God, He'll go with you and everything that you speak, He'll be anointing and you just touch Him. Touch him. God touch you and, and you just win. Go ahead and win your family. Amen. Amen? Tell them about Jesus. Tell them the truth. Tell them the Lord's are coming. Tell them revivals are coming. Praise God. This may be the last meeting that they'll ever see in this world. And praise God, if it is, I wouldn't want them to miss it. Would you? Amen. People being saved. God told me this week He's going to save people. And He already saved too. Amen. Got a call yesterday. One got saved Tuesday night, Anthony. Never met the boy before in my life. And he come to the house to give his life to Jesus. And hey man, he's worried about this young lady. And I told him, I said, well now you can pray for her. We'll pray God saves her. He called me yesterday and God saved her this week. You see, God's not dead for them that believe. Come on. God's able. Same prayers answered in the courtrooms of the justice system this week. Amen. Families together. God's a touching people. You've got to understand that God's not dead. He's still alive this morning. Amen. So you pray. I don't know if I can get this, sister. You just got to cover for me. <laughs> I go to missing it sing while I'm cut. So you listen to the words. Don't listen to the way we sing it. Yes, <clears throat> there is a
He made all things, created man according to His plan. key to the service. Amen. Come on. Anybody. David, won't you sing? Thank God I'm 
podcast? Last time, I don't know if I remember the word. Somebody is, well, I'm looking for the word. Christian Barney is on signal. Somebody. Maybe somebody got testimony. What did God do for you? I got testimony. God really blessed me this week. I ain't working Sundays no more, so I have to come to church. Man. And but he still knew that I had to support my youngin and, and my family. So he gave me another job. He sent it to me. It just bounced right in my face the next, very next morning. That. I can still make it. And and I praise him for that. I praise him for saving my my soul. And he's really blessed me in a lot of ways. And I just pray that my family sees how much he is a blessing and really turns to them. That's my prayer this week, that all my family come and be with me and learn the truth of the Lord. Amen. Thanks, Lord. I praise Him and thank Him so much every day for what He does for us. Good. Good. Anybody else? I need to touch the Bless Him, Lord. I thank God for being able to be here. For what I've been through. That song David sung. It's right. It is God. I've been wanting to give my testimony. I've been wanting to be able to be strong enough to stand in front of it. So I have to give it a second down. You know, back before all this started with my sickness, I had a dream one night. Woke me up. I told my wife about it the next morning. I told her, told her about the dream. Told her that uh, it scared me. That her and my daughters, uh, I'd gone to the doctor and the doctor put me in the hospital. I said, I seen you and my daughter standing over me crying. I said, I had tubes in me. And they were taking me to Winston. But I said, he'll be okay. And, uh, you know, a week and a half, two weeks later, I went to my doctor's appointment. He sent me up to the hospital. The only thing I remember is being in the emergency room. After that, everything's blank. But, you know, she said that, that they was going to send me to Winston. And, and she was a crying, upset, said she's awful upset. I think she was about to call security on her because she was wanting to talk to me before they put the tubes in me, put the respirator up. Uh, she said, uh, "said I told her he'd be okay." And she said that uh, that dream will come back to her. I think you was there. She told you about it. Well, I didn't know until last week that I called you. Yeah. I don't remember calling you. I told David about it. Well, I got down there and had me in a coma. And I see you. And there's a little over a week, I don't remember a thing about what happened in this world. But what I see, phew! <laughs> you know, I seen angels. I was at a place, the prettiest place I'd ever been standing on a road, road of gold. A 
plush green field with daisies in it. I talked to my dad. I was, I was walking down that road and he hollered at me. I know it was him because he's the only one who used my whole name to get my attention. I turned around and he's a lot younger than he was. He said, uh, Rick, he said, it's not your time. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, it's not your time. He said, sit down here and let's talk a while. And I told him I loved him. He'd been a burden on my heart to tell him that I loved him. We talked, and I told him, and he told me. Well, we was sitting there talking. I won't, well, I won't forget it. It felt like the ground just shimmering a little bit. It's like a cup of coffee, a little ripple on it. And there's a hand reached down. Yeah. And I looked up, took that hand, and the light blinded me. But the robe, the, the whiteness of the robe, is the whitest I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, the fresh snow, with the sun glistening off of it. Wasn't that white? He said, Son, he said, I'm not done with you. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Yeah. You know, that back, they started bringing me out of that cone. Yeah. I'd open, I'd open my eyes and I couldn't talk. I was paralyzed. They had me paralyzed and I couldn't move my arms or anything. All I could do was just look around. And I thought to myself, laying there, what would it have been if I'd been lost in that shape? Not being able to talk, not being able to move, do anything. How could I get saved? How could I tell anyone that I was saved? Yeah. But there's a, a nurse is sitting out, out there in the hall. Yeah. She had the funniest hair do I'd ever seen. <laughs> had just braids, look like ropes tied in her hair, long hair. She, I, I noticed her. She's always just sitting there staring at me. When they took the cube out and I talked, come in there. And she said, You don't remember me, do you? I said, I don't remember nothing. She said, I was your nurse. I said, Well, I said, I didn't know why you were staring at me. She said, I was a looking at the angel sitting there beside of you. <laughs> said, You've been there. Ever since I've been there. You know, I was in the ICU five days. They brought me out of that coma. I don't remember people coming to see me. My wife told me about it. But when they moved me up on, up on the, in the private room, I got to doing good. And there's a, another preacher, my sister. The preacher, he down there a whole lot. He come in and seen me. Well, he's in there. He's down there one day, and I was by myself, and I told him what I'd seen. In his response to me, he said, well, he said, you know, they had you on some awful high pairs of lucigenic drugs. And him a preacher. I lost every bit of faith I had in that preacher right then. Because I know where I'd been, what I'd seen. I mean, it was real. I, I could like, shut my eyes and open to make sure I wasn't dreaming. And I was right there in the same place. 
I don't know how long it was. I know for about nine days, I don't remember nothing. But up there in my room, he, he left me some little cards that said, Smile, Jesus loves you. Well, they come in, they told me I was going to get to go home Wednesday. This is on Monday. Well, they thought one of my small intestines had kinked up. They put the tube back down my throat and sent me back for x-rays and said he did kinked. Yeah, they was pumping my stomach off. And said they was going to do a CAT scan the next morning. So they done it and they said they didn't find anything. I said, I told you you wouldn't find anything. Yeah. Bless you. And the doctors, they couldn't understand it. They said, well, we're going to do an upper and lower GI, check your intestines out. I said, you ain't going to find nothing. So they done that. <laughs> Held me over for another week. <coughs> but there was a little woman on our floor, and you'd hear her call out. All, all theirs. Through the night, another day, she, she wanted Jesus. She said, Jesus, help me. Oh God, please help me. And there's a nurse come in and she said, I asked her about that woman. She said, yes, she, she said uh, she was a diabetic and they'd amputated both legs. I said, if you don't mind, I said, take her this card. She, she said, I will. She took the card down to her and you didn't hear her anymore. And she come back in that night and I said, well, what happened to the woman? She's quiet. She said, I give her that card you gave me. She said she took it and just snuggled up to it. You know, she, she knew Jesus was there then. And she got to go home two days before I did. But you know, I just... I can't thank God enough for what this church has done. For y'all being there for me and my wife. But you know, they can say it was drugs, but I know what it is. I know what's on the other side. And that's, I'm looking forward to it. I was homesick to get to come back to church. But I'm home seek for something else now. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I have got a stronger testimony. David, I didn't have a song now, but he's given us testimony. I want to move from this world of fear. Kind of getting tired of living here. I want to go home where the winds of sorrow never blow. Far from the shadow of the tomb. Far from the sadness and the gloom. I want to go home when death demands my tattered soul. Getting ready today. Moving out tomorrow, gonna say goodbye to earthly sorrow. I'm looking for a mansion fair. I see the light, I'm almost there. I want to go home when life is through. Moving out to heaven where dreams come true. Yeah. I get thrilled just thinking about the glory we will share. Gonna see loved ones who are gone. Gonna see the king up on his throne. Like and never return to this life when I get there. Yeah. Getting ready today. Moving out tomorrow, gonna say goodbye to earthly sorrow. I'm looking for a mansion fair. I see the light, I'm almost there. Amen. Praise God. 
district is lowering. So my four days. I want to thank God for all he's done for me. All he's going to do. It's deep, it's deep and everything and stuff. I can see things that's working out and getting closer. They, they, they moved around the one prison. It's, it's, it's basically a halfway house. Come to Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Most of all, I want to thank you for saving my soul. Still, I don't understand why. I had to buy those done. Amen, brother. And it's time being stuff. People don't realize how important, how precious it is, how old time Holy Ghost can be to turn call upon your soul. Some of the open eyes, open these blind eyes from this world, to see a Savior and King. Amen, brother. Anybody?
Glory to God, good. Anybody else got a song or testimony? Why don't you pray just a few minutes? Bless you. This church is full of testimonies, full of miracles, full of people that God's touched and blessed and God's not done with yet. Amen. Seen prayers answered. Know God's alive. I know He's real. So you pray this morning. I, I just want to be what God wants me to be. And sometimes that's hard to be because you're trying to be something else because you think He wants you to be something else and all He wants you to be is you. Amen. That's all He wants. You to be yourself and be a witness for Him. That's all He asks you to be. Amen. And you don't have to have a million dollars in the bank or the finest suit on to be a witness for Jesus. Amen. You don't have to be. That's how good God is. Amen. He can just let common people be a witness for Him. So you pray real hard this morning, sister. Ask us to sing this song. I don't know. I'm not much of a singer. Never have been. If you listen to the words of this song, not how we how we sing it. And you know, I thank God for everybody that's here, sis. Every miracle, every touch of God's hands, everything. I thank God for everything. Amen. Every hard time. You see, the hard times in the battles is what makes us strong. Amen. That's why it helps us to have patience. The Bible said, tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not to be ashamed. Amen. Amen. So you pray this morning, God be in our helper. We want to try to do what God has had for us to do. And then you figure out whether you've done what God wants you to do or not. You see, that's the key. It's not about Dave Lyles. It's about everybody coming together to worship God and to be a obedient to what God's telling you to do. If God's telling you to sing and you've never sung a song, you go ahead and try it. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be some big singer to make a joyful noise for Jesus. Whatever He says for you to do that, you do it. I appreciate you, Rick. Amen. Because I believe there is a place called heaven. Amen. 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 I believe it's pure peace. Nothing but peace and love. There's no no turmoil, no hatred, no sin, no lies, no nothing over there. It can't enter into there. I believe that. It's all pure. So you pray this morning, God being my helper. For a long time I've traveled down a long, lonely road. My heart was so heavy in sin I sank low. Then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out that He would bring me out and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken His flight. Like a blind man that God gave back His sight. Like a poor wretched beggar that's found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. 
washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out that He would bring me out and show me the way. About being set free. Amen. When the burdens of sin was so real upon your life that you was weighted down, you couldn't hold your head up, and the breath of the Lord come out of glory. Praise be unto God, and all at once the, the weights of sin was lifted, and you felt like the world was picked up off of your shoulders. Anybody remember that? Praise be unto God, that song has been the singing like a bird out of prison. That's take on his flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched beggar who found poor John and Bain. I'm so glad that I found God that he would bring me out through his holy name. Sing it, praise God. And He showed me the way. Anybody thankful this morning? Anybody want to praise Him? Amen. How that God saved you didn't have to. Amen. And not only that, praise God, He walked down through the corridors of life and had picked you. Amen. To be a child of the King. The Bible said no, we know. There was a book of John 15 chapter. I believe it's about the 15th, 16th verse. He said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, amen, and ordained you, praise God, that your fruits shall remain, and that whatever you ask in the Father's name, it shall be done to you, praise God, that's why you're here. For God knows, He loves you. Pick you. Do you realize that? Picked you to be a child of God, a witness to your family. How did God touches you, amen? How did God blesses you and how did God touches you, amen? Praise be unto God, amen. We pray this week, see people saved, see God deliver the courtrooms, did we not? The demons of hell couldn't even come into the courtroom. You know why? Because the glory of God was there, amen. Every prayer that was prayed on Wednesday night was answered, was it not, young man of God? People. I'm going to preach this a minute. Amen. I ain't going to be before you long. God being my helper. I feel I got up this morning feeling so good I can't hardly stand. You may not understand that, but it's been a long time since I got up and felt good. Come on. So you've lost your mind. Probably worked the hardest yesterday I've ever worked in the many a year. Amen. Praise God wide open all day long. Jeff, from daylight, amen, to way past dark last night. Felt so good, amen. Praise God, I got up yesterday morning. Felt so good, amen. I, my wife was fixing the weed eat the yard. And I told her, I said, let me do it. I said, I believe I can do it today, amen. Praise God, I've been praying, Rick, amen. Praise God, amen. Every time I pick the weed eater up, get from here to the back door, my arm would swell up till I couldn't even move it, amen. But yesterday, praise God, God let me weed eat my whole farm, amen. Amen, laid the weed eater down, went to work, and amen. Felt so good, Jeff. I couldn't hardly stand it. Hey, man, and this morning I woke up and I feel so good. Hey, man, I could have run the church. That's how good God is. Can I get a lay man? It's just good to be a child of a king. It's good to be in the house of God this morning, amen, with God's miracles, amen. Amen. 
Bless him, Lord. Glory to God. I went to the old barn this morning. I try to pray every morning. But I like to pray in the barn. So people, you think, that old horse even thinks I'm crazy sometimes. But I like to pray in the barn. Jeff, or there's nothing to bother me. I believe when God speaks, I can hear Him. Amen. My mind's not on everything else, and I can hear Him. And I prayed this morning. I asked God this morning, sister, I said, Lord, I just like to have something to preach this morning to help somebody along life's journey. Maybe one more day. I don't know how long we've got left, but praise God, however long we got. I'd rather you have the best quality of life. And when you're on top, amen, you've got the best quality. Can I get an amen? It ain't no fun, amen. Praise God when you're down and things are happening. Praise God. But when God's a blessing and everything's going good, Mitchell, praise God and give you a shout a little bit. You know, sometimes we just need to shout just a little, Sister Sandy. This world's full of troubles and trials and lies and deceptions. But praise God, when you get a hold of the truth, they might go to be able to shout just a little. They might even on the inside you ought to be able to rejoice because your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Or to be happy to be in the house of God. Homecoming. Homecoming this morning. <laughs> Hey, it's homecoming to coming one morning. Amen. It won't be a pleasant chapel church. Hey, man, we're all going to meet on the cloud, sister. Amen. Pray be unto God. Amen. Hey, and when the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, man, we all go into the throne room of God and sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb of God. And He introduces us as a bride. Hey, man. Your name's written on the placemats uh, around the table. Uh, and they're going to read the names. Amen. Uh, everyone who steps up to the door, brother. Jack, amen. Uh, amen. The Lord's going to be standing there with a the mighty book uh, in His hand. Uh, the Lamb's book of life. Uh, he's going to open up the page. Uh, he's going to say right here and read. Uh, Jack Carter, amen. Uh, born again. Uh, oh, by the blood. Place man, because I, I called it a long time ago and made reservations. Amen. It's reserved. I've got a place at the table. Amen. One day after a while, people can't take that away from me. Amen. They might take your dignity, they may take your joy, they might hurt you, but I'm telling you right now, they cannot take your place at the table. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read just a little here. This is the only thing that comes to my mind. I sat down and began to sing this morning. And this scripture just flooded my soul. And if nothing else, I'll read it, Tony. Bless him, Lord. And sit down, amen. You can't, I can't preach. You can't do nothing without God. Amen. amen. And praise be unto God, if I get excited and get to preaching, don't tell you. It's, I'm going to just go ahead and mention it now. You wonder where these ladies are going. They're going to heat up some food, amen. We're going to have dinner after a while. When we get done over here eating from the man of heaven, sister, we'll go and eat from God. Over here at the bountiful table God spread in the fellowship of God's people. Amen. This will be the closest thing you ever get to glory if you're in this fellowship with God's people. But I began to think about some things in the Word of God. And this scripture, very short scripture, came to my mind, Louise. Amen. This morning. And I don't know why, but somebody needs this this morning. For you see, I didn't ask for what I want. I asked, praise God, that God had sinned what we stand in need of. Somebody needs this this morning, Brother Buck. Amen. Sometimes, praise God, we all need something from God. If we be honest, we all need something. This revival is fixing to break loose here in this little church tonight. Amen. I need this revival more than I've ever needed one, Sister Shadi. I need this one. Amen. I need a stirring from God this morning. I, I need something from heaven that this world can't give. I, you see, I need the taste of the glory of God sometime. Amen. Pray you pray. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Very familiar scripture. I want you to listen to the words. I want you to listen to what thus saith the Word of God. Over in the book of Psalms, very familiar scripture, praise God, in the 23rd Psalms come to my mind as we just sitting here. I don't know why, brother, but 
But I, I thought about this and I'm going to talk just a minute. I'm going to read this. This is very familiar scripture. I thought about Sister Magdalene. What a blessing. Yeah. What a light you've been to me. What a help you've been to me even before you even know that God's going to call me to preach. You see, so most of you don't know, but I've known Sister Magdalene ever since I was just a little bitty boy in the second grade. Every day I'd go to school and I hated school worse than anything in life. And it made me sick to even think about going to school. And I'd cry every day. I'd cry to come home and they'd take me into the lunchroom in the cafeteria. Sister Magdalene, God put her there and she'd take care of me and my dad come and got me. Amen. She would take care of me and love me. Amen. Little did we know that that little crybaby boy would be your pastor one day. Praise God. I want you to know, sister, I want to give you a rose this morning. How many times I've been blessed just by thinking about the lady that helped me in that lunchroom. Can I get an amen? Praise God. I believe we want to tell them we love them right now. Before it's too late. Praise God. She's been a help to me. And not only me, but a whole lot of kids. Amen. She made a difference in her life, and I don't know about you, but praise God, she made a difference in my life while pastoring this little church. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. Bless Can't hardly stand it. See, most of you didn't know that. Cried every day. I was miserable. Didn't fit in. You know, I find myself, I still don't feed me. God had something for me. Even in the second grade, BJ. All the hard times in your life, you thought there was no hope. And everybody thought there was no hope for BJ Fears. There was an eye looking out of glory. He said, I know where to put him. And I'm going to bring him to a place where he can see the fire of God and believe. I thank God for you. Amen. You know what I've noticed about this young man? I started to shout a little bit yesterday. He didn't even notice yesterday. Pulled right up to the sheriff's car yesterday. Jeff, he didn't have to run. Never thought about it yesterday, did you? You know why? Because you wasn't afraid. You know why? Because you're not guilty. Amen. Come on. You see, I see little things people don't even notice. I used to run from them too. I got to read this, Jack. I want you to listen to what does say the Word of God and let's have church. The psalmist knows what he was talking about, Brother Tony. Yeah. If you go back and read about old David and the things that David went through, praise God in the life, you'll understand about the book of Psalms. The Bible said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. And he said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. The Bible said it. Jesus told him over there in the book of John. He said, I am the door. And if any man enter in through the door, he can go in and out and find green pastures. That's what the Word of God said. They peace to them and enter in through the doorway, which is Christ Jesus. The Bible said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen. I don't know what He is to everybody else, but He is my shepherd. Amen. And every blessing in this blessed book is mine according to the Word of God. Amen. They'll say, give me a little piece of glory. I'll be satisfied. I ain't going to be satisfied unless it's all mine. And the Bible said it. Bible 
Bible said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Do you ever realize what He is means? It means right now. Present. Here and now. Praise God. Not late, Not in the past. Not in the future. But right now He's my shepherd. And everything century promised to God's people is mine. Amen. I was working one day and I was sweating so bad about to smother to death. And all at once this one verse of Scripture came to my mind. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want it. And that little word he has jumped across the sky and he's as big as anything I've ever seen in my life. And do you realize what he is? And the children of Israel, when he brought them out of Egypt, they came down to the Red Sea. And Pharaoh was fast approaching them. Amen. The Bible said in the wilderness that God went with them. He didn't forsake them, Gary, like a lot of preachers say. They try to tell me now that, praise God, that God forsook His people for 40 years in the wilderness. That's a lie. The Bible didn't say God forsook His children. Amen. They wandered around in the wilderness, but they were blessed. Can I get an amen? They found the God according to the Word of God. Their clothes didn't get red by Their shoes didn't wear out. And not one day did they get up hungry. It might have not have been what they wanted to eat. But praise God, it come from glory. And it satisfied their needs. And I get an amen. Come on, praise God. We'll go to the cabin and say we ain't got nothing to eat. And what we really mean is it don't satisfy what we want. Can I get an amen? Come on. Praise God with the children of Israel manifest there every day, amen. The Bible said it's sweet as honeycomb. It's small as a whore cross, the Bible said. But it's sustainable for that day. Can I get a name out? Every need was met. Now above all the theologians and everything that's been taught, I'm going to preach a book, okay? Amen. The Bible didn't say that God forsook His people. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that God forsake His people, God forbid. The Bible said that God went with them. Yeah. Every day of their life, even the hard times, yeah. God was with them. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Even when God, you think that He's not around, God's ever present and never absent. And if we just shut up and listen, God's got a way to get us out of the troubles. Amen. If we just turn the right way, can I get an amen? Come on, praise God. The Bible said He went with them. A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now if you study the, de the desert and, the, and the, amen, the weather and the, and the temperatures in the desert, according to the, de according to the word, amen, according to man's knowledge, amen, in the desert, amen, gets way over 100 degrees, amen, of the day. Can I get an amen? amen. But do you know what I believe this morning? I believe, Sister Sandy, that there wasn't a child of God when it crossed over Jordan, ever had a sunburn. Can I get an amen? Say, how do you know? Because the Bible said there's a pillar of cloud that went over in my day. Can I get an amen? And according to man's knowledge, it gets bitter cold in the desert of the night. They wasn't the one that shivered. You know how I know this? Because there was a pillar of fire by night. It was warm in the cold ice. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm preaching? He knew what he's talking about. Yeah. You see, there's some people know what they're talking about, sister. You know how I know that? Because they've had an experience with this man called Jesus. Amen. If you read the Word of God, old John the Baptist, hey man, he was pretty bad off over there in the prison. He's a fiction to be beheaded and people didn't even know. They don't even realize this, brother. He's a facing death because, hey man, he told the king the truth. The Bible said, Amen, praise God. He told the king, said, It's unlawful for you to have your brother's wife. Amen. So she, in the heart that she was, she told him, Praise God, to cut his head off and bring it to him on a plate. And the king told her daughter, said, oh, Up to the half of the kingdom, said, I'll give it, just ask. And her mama told her, said, You ask for John's head. Amen. He'll give it to you. You ask for John's head. Amen. You know what they done? They cut the man of God's head off because he told the truth. Can I get an amen? People will have you killed because you know the truth. Can I get an amen? Listen to me. But old John sent two of his servants to find Jesus. I believe he's in a dark time in his life when the devil became to come and that make him down. Whether he, what he was doing was right or not. And the Bible said he sent his servants to Christ and said, 
He's still God. He's still the Savior. No matter what you face. John may be killed because he told the truth, but I'm here to tell you right now when I get over yonder, I'm going to sit down and talk to John. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on. You ever thought about that? Amen. You ever thought about it? Amen. Paul and Silas will be there. Yeah. Matthew Luke. Amen. Praise God will be there. And praise God, old John is going to be there. Can I, anybody? Brother Cal, say you're a nut. Praise God, I ain't only going to see her. Her mitts or Kobe or any of the rest of you. I'm going to see John. I got a lot to say when we get there. Hey man, say you're a nut. Praise God, I got a lot to say here. You can imagine what's going to be like when I get on the John. Hey man, praise God. I won't have to be no more else. You ever thought about that? Oh God, I got preach. I'm about to get way off. I about got lost in that. You better pray just a minute. The Bible said, Amen, praise God. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I want you to know something. God don't lead you into hell. God don't lead you into ungodliness. Amen. The Bible said that He leads you in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Can I get an amen? Now come on. Praise be unto God. He restored my soul. Praise God. Those that's broken hearted, God can put them back together. The life that's in shambles, God can restore it. Can I, anybody know what I'm preaching? I'm talking about heartaches, hard times. God can put that together and make it a blessing. Amen. The psalmist know that. How do you know it? Because, praise God, God had moved in his life. And the Bible said, Yea, though I walk through the valley yeah. of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Woo! Praise be unto God. They man two testimonies this morning about when you close your eyes and you don't know you're waking up. Hey man, there's a better place. Can I get an amen? Hey man, there's peace for a child of God that's leaving this world. Can I get an amen? The Bible said rejoice in one that's gone in the Lord. Praise God, brother Rick, your testimony that you brought back to the house of God to tell God's people this thing's real, church. It's there, amen. Say hey. It's real. It's real. I got to see a glimpse of it one time. And I ain't never got over that sister. And that's been a long, long time ago. And I can still see it just as plain as I'm looking at you. And many people thought I was crazy down on that river. And as a matter of fact, I thought I'd lost this there for a few minutes. I started seeing things, brother, from that day on, praise God, of things in all of this world. And people don't believe it, and that's all right. You don't have to, but praise God. I'm telling you, when I get there, it's going to be just like God said it was. I promise you that. It'll be just like God said it was. Amen. The psalmist knows what he's talking about. Yea, he don't walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil. You see, for those that believe God, amen, it's just a shadow. Amen. How can there be any darkness if you're in the light? Oh, come on. How can there be any darkness in that valley, praise God, if it's if the lights, if you're living in the light? Can I get it? If you're a child with a light, it'll just be a shadow when you pass through. Can I get it, amen? That's just a stepping stone. And you know how I know this, Brian? For the Bible began to speak over in the old Bible. Amen. When Moses went to get the children of Israel out of bondage and they come down to the last plagues of Egypt, amen. Do you know what the last plague was? It was death. Can I get an amen? You know what the last enemy is? It's going to be death, amen. But I thank God I conquered it 20 some years ago. When I give my life to Jesus, death had no dominion over me. For the Bible said, all them that believe it on him shall never die. Believe us now, then, say, man. 
I ain't dying, I'm leaving. I'm moving. Amen. Anybody believe that? Yes. So you've lost your mind, preacher. Bless you, Lord. Okay, I've done told this folks once. And my wife, I've got to I've got to get busy and write a bunch of stuff down, Keith. Me and Keith, we done been talking about this thing, about leaving this world, praise God. And I've got all this stuff I want done at my funeral. And all this stuff, Keith says, you ain't going to need it. And I said, well, if I don't, I, I might just go ahead and preach my name. <laughs> I got things planned out, Jeff, and I'd hate to miss it, wouldn't you? Come on. I thought about it. I could see Jeff going up Horse Creek, amen, hauling the casket on that wagon. and I'd like to be there. <laughs> Is that crazy? Come on. You see, people don't think about this wrong. I'd like to have everybody that's ever had a part of my ministry that even owns a horse or a donkey or anything. Hey man, praise God to put the right on bay t-shirts on one more time and start that at Lansing, hey amen, and haul my body up Little Horse Creek, hey amen, and praise God plant it on top of the hill up yonder in the prairie cemetery, hey amen. Can I get it, hey amen? And praise God, hallelujah. And praise God, if I ain't going to get to see this, if I ain't going to leave this world for that to happen, we might ought to just go ahead and plant it and have it anyway. Can I get it, hey amen? Lord, So I think, I think about all this crazy stuff. What about what a ride, what a testimony one last time. And I can leave for somebody to see Jesus. Amen? And I can leave something for somebody to follow me home about. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. He said, For thou art with me. He said, I ain't afraid of dying. But I've got life. Come on, church. I get so excited, I can't understand it sometimes. Just thinking about going home. Huh? Amen. The Bible said this. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And he said, My cup runneth over. And he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. The psalmist knows what he's talking about. He told you about him leaning. He told you about him being his shepherd. And he shall not want. Did you know that God said to me, He'll supply all your needs? He didn't say He'd supply every want you on it, but every need you need to survive in this world. God's already got it on hand, and it'll come to you right when you need it. I don't need a new truck. I'd have to make payments on that truck. And that means I'd have to work twice as hard to make the payments on that truck. And I don't like to work. <laughs> I'm being honest. I've gotten the habit of it, but that don't mean I like it. You see, work wasn't supposed to be fun. Work was punishment because of the Word of God. Read it. Adam got us in trouble and that's the reason we have to work. Can I get an amen? amen. He said, by the sweat of your brow. Yeah. 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 Read the book. Yes. There was a curse that God put upon man. Having to till the ground, brother, and to work for what you eat. Yeah. And he said, if you work not, you eat not. Can I get an amen? amen. That's right. <laughs> I just want to live what I've got time left to doing what I want to do and the winning people to the Lord sister and praise God, amen, enjoy Jesus. Can I get an amen? Come on! 
I don't want to be burdened down with all this stuff. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need to be free so I can go and do what God tells me to do, Sister Lewis. Hey man, just turn loose and go and win somebody to Jesus because you know sometimes Gary, they ain't going to come to church. We're going to have to win them in the barn. We're going to have to win them under a rock. Beside the road, Chris. Whatever it takes. Hey man, just get them in. Because the calls are coming. And we're going home now. Hey man, brother. We won't have to worry about being here or over here or going somewhere else. Hey man, we'll all be together. And you know, you ever notice that the best times that I've ever had in this world is with God's people. I won't say that one more time. The best times that I have ever had in 53 years of life is when I'm with God's people. Amen. That's when you can have a good time. I'm all hooked. Get you a song, praise God. I don't know if anybody got anything out of this or not. But I'm here to tell you the times are drawing near, Sally, when people's going to miss it and they're not going to get to go with us. You see, don't wait on the preacher to win people to the Lord. If it's you, go ahead and tell them what God said to tell them. Amen. And I promise you'll know who they are because they'll be ready when they get there. I promise you. Pray for revival tonight that starts at 7 o'clock. Amen. And if you come, come looking for God to move in your place. Amen. Yeah. Bring some more people with you. Amen. Go home and tell you people, so come on, let's go to church tonight. We're fixing to have me. If you ain't never heard Brother John Jones preach, you'll enjoy what he's saying, I promise you. Amen. Brother Brandon Hipp's going to sing tonight. I think some of them are going to sing tonight. I think I'll just call whoever God puts on my mind and we're just going to have church. How's that? Let's just have church. Hey Amen. Come back looking for a blessing. And don't you miss the meal that these Germans is preparing out here. Praise God. Get you a song, hey Amen. Where's Buck? Buck, get you a song. Praise God. <laughs> Don't forget to pray for Brother Tony. I've talked with the Lord many times at my bedside. And I've asked His forgiveness as I dealt to Him.